Hello. Hey guys, can you see me? How's everyone doing? Can you hear me? Chat, uh, chat in the chat. Comment in the chat. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Like my hands at least. Everything's fine. Everything's working. It's a little bit delayed. So you will hear me or see me. Everything a little bit delayed. So I hope everything will be fine. Hey, everybody. Hey to uh, DC, Sandy. Hey, Manika, Brenda. Hi, Line Evans. Hey, Mako, it's me again from Brazil. If you could please talk more slowly again. Yes, I will try my best. Whenever I get um, nervous, I sometimes um, start talking very quickly. Uh, but I will try. I, everyone's commenting my nails, so I freshly made <laughs> my nails. So it looks uh, fine on camera. Because, you know, I, I can't go on camera without my nails. Um, so, yeah. Let me see if I will grab the settings here so I can adjust if necessary it was so nice lately but now it's raining i don't know I'm, I'm a little bit sad about that even though i mean we can't really go outside but i like sun it makes me happy hey to india um hey veda brenda so um in case you're not ready yet if you have to prepare your supplies uh you can do this i will do this as well i have all of everything set around but i will just um prepare everything so it's in uh in camera so in, you guys know if you follow me already i like to use two jars of water one for clean water um and one for rinsing the brush so i keep my colors clean and also today because last time i was using the white knights um watercolors and to be honest they fell down on the floor and I was way too lazy to pick them up yet and sort them out again so I picked something else to paint today and that's going to be the Sonnet it's the same brand and it feels like I hear also the price from I don't know when I bought them it was $20 back in the days I don't know how it's how much it is now and from the I took this um, I, I taped down this price because I did this uh, review a few years ago. Not a few, I think it was last year. It feels like years ago. Um, so I'm going to use this. The downside is that there is no mixing palette and I won't use any today because we want, I wanted to um, use a technique where you mix colors immediately on. What's wrong with the focus? I wanted to use those immediately on the um, painting. So like mixing colors on the painting itself without mixing palette. Um, and yeah, so the colors are here also. I didn't have a swatch, but this should be fine because kind of gives a good idea of what colors are inside. Comment in the chat, what, are, what watercolors are you going to use today? So these are going to be mine for today. Then I'm going to use also, so we have um, water, paint, brush. I'm going to use again my silver black velvet brush. Um, it's, it's dirty, I didn't clean it. Um, but because I like it, how, how much paint and water it holds, it has a nice tip. And why is it so dirty? But yeah, I'm going to use this, but you can use any brush you have, doesn't matter. And Kamalin Camel, Winston Newton, uh, Superior Watercolor. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and water, watercolor paper, I'm going to use today this watercolor Strathmore watercolor paper because, uh, you know, I always like to use Arsh watercolor paper and cotton paper, but today it doesn't really matter because the goal is to um, just relax today and don't really paint something that is where you need to have super flat, flat washes and stuff like that. It's more about the colors today. And I will show you in a second what we're going to paint. Uh, last night, Ada says, I finished your tutorial on Van Gogh Starry Night. Ah, oh, it's one of my favorites. Okay, Marine's tunes. I don't know what Marie's tunes is. 
I don't if if you're talking to me, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um so everything, not everything, but this brush is from I got from the Jack Jackson's art supply store online. Then let's keep it here. Then I'm going to use again a pencil because I would like to sketch out things so you can also follow along and repeat if you want to do exactly the same as I do. A piece of my broken eraser and tissue paper. I'm going to use because again you want to control that water and paint and stuff like that. So I have always a tissue paper or a paper towel or anything that soaks up water. Sometimes I actually if I don't have anything around, I actually use some like hands or in worst case, uh, my clothes because yeah, sometimes you gonna have to do what you gotta do. And then, yeah, tape, we don't need tape today again. And have I forgotten anything? I think that was it. And yeah, I guess ready to start. Marie's tubes. No, I don't. I don't. I have never tried them. I don't know. I can't really say. But today, it's it's all about colors and getting familiar with them. Uh, if you're using liquid watercolors, yes. But there might be a little bit uh, staining if you use uh, dye-based watercolors. Uh, watercolor pencils. Um, you. Can but it won't it won't work with the things that I'm showing today. But you can still follow along, and it's about getting creative. So if you see a technique, you can try it out on um, just with everything you have. Now because now I I was not sure if it's the right season for that, but it was getting hot and warm, and well, it's actually the same. But you know what I mean. It was sunny and warm, and everything's nice weather and hot. Actually, it was really hot yesterday. I think. And that's why I thought, let's do something summer inspired, even though it's still spring. And I'm kind of hoping or waiting for the summer and warm weather in general. And hopefully you can get out. And that's why I decided let's paint something um, like this to practice color mixing, color harmony, having fun and relaxing. Because last time you painted something that took a little bit more of drawing and being like um, very precise a little bit here we can just relax and have some fun with watercolors and how they um, how they blend and how we, what can you can do with it step by step and uh, we'll also keep the shapes very simple um, you can also after watching this live or the replay you can use the same technique to do something completely different um, for example I have these shapes, but for example, maybe you want to do this in like us, even now, if you want to follow, um, you can use like a triangle or you can also do something like just a, a little bit uh, narrow here or something that's even more narrow than that, like, or something like that. Um, today, I would just wanna show you the whole technique and then you can do whatever you feel like doing and experiment. Um, yeah, I was thinking about galaxy, but I thought it was like galaxies, like everyone's in galaxy and I feel like ice cream and ice cream is actually waiting in my um, freezer and I'm so tempted to eat it, but I don't want to, because once I start eating ice cream, I can't stop. So I'm kind of, um, and not, uh, like don't go with this route. I'm waiting for a treat. Um. Do you have a tip to not let the watercolor paper buckle up? Because mine always does. Either use thicker paper, thicker watercolor paper, or uh, use cotton paper. But if it's also not thick enough, you can also buckle tape down, or you can also apply water to the background, tape it down, and then you can paint uh, with water on top. And then you can kind of, it kind of sticks to the surface or anything like that you have below. And this gives you more time. I sometimes do this because lately it's got it gets so hot and everything dries so quickly. And I need to, um, I have to give my painting and process a little bit more time. So I do this. I'm sorry, I, I got a little bit quick in talking again because I get nervous. So I'm slowing down, breathe. <sighs> I don't know why I always get nervous, but. Okay, guys, um, 
what's the best watercolor paper in your opinion, Mako? Um, uh, it depends on what you want to paint. For example, if you want to paint landscapes, I feel like uh, Irish watercolor paper cold press is amazing because it uh, has this little pockets to keep everything, um, uh, um, the paper, everything more, um, like it doesn't soak up the, it doesn't dry so quickly like everything else. <laughs> don't be nervous yeah i'm i'm trying i that's so why i'm doing this kind of so i can get more practice and actually talk more in live and um yeah if you have what well, if you have any questions about watercolor supplies and things like that um you can check out my uh the description below this video there are some guides linked or visit my website there is you more um linked so i explain all, also, all sorts of things that you want to keep in mind um, for watercolor supplies in general. Um, okay, let's start. Okay, it's been already 10 minutes. I'm just babbling around. Um, I'm still getting ready, so feel free to continue. <laughs> okay. A ATGSM is way, way too th uh, thin. Oh, I always recommend to start with at least, here's for example, 30 GSM. And this is uh, the minimum I feel like is the best. It's already buckles sometimes if you put a lot of water on top. So everything else is it's for drawing and stuff like that. But watercolor, you want to have something that holds the paper and holds the paint. I will twist all the words again. Okay, so this here was just a, um, I was playing around with how I want to transition with the colors. Now I always like to plan ahead a little bit because I want to know exactly what I'm doing and, um, or, or at least I have already something on paper that I can work from. So if I feel like, okay, I don't like this or that, I know exactly what to do next. So if you ever feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to paint or I'm scared that it won't look exactly like I want to, don't be afraid to just paint something like it can be super messy it can be maybe it doesn't look even bad and you're like wow it's actually pretty cool and if it looks bad and you're not exactly okay this combination didn't work and here I use way too much water I will do something um different next time okay let's get started so um here for the painting tutorial I'm going to use also a similar size paper this is just one of those cut in half. So, but you can use any size you want. You can even just um, use a smaller size or bigger, whatever you want. And if you if you want, you can also plan out where you want to draw uh, and paint your popsicles. Now, I, I usually like to do this and just plan ahead. So, if you have a paper, I you can also divide this like here, for example. So you have space. And then, for example, maybe you want to add four ice creams just like that. You don't want to paint all of those. Just divide and plan ahead where you place them so you have an understanding where it uh, goes. Now here, um, the shape is pretty, pretty, if you, like, I don't know if you were, in case you were last time on my live stream, it was, um, you painted an egg. Now it's kind of like um, more square, but it's pretty much like a square here below and then it gets round where you have here a little like a small square and gets more round here like you can see the difference but you can paint or like create any shape you want you can even just have like i don't know even just a circle it's it's all it's all um up to you okay so i will okay i will just draw the lines here and just plan out where I want to place them because this paper is a little bit smaller than this, but I want to still have some um, idea where it goes. So here, th there's one row here, one row here. And again, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just some idea. And then I will draw, Divide this a little bit in like a grid. Just want to create a grid. Or you just paint whatever, like 
you don't have to plan um, plan out. You can just follow one of those and paint wherever you have space. Okay, so then let's start. Now the first shape is you can start somewhere in the corner if you paint anywhere else. It's fine. Just uh, follow kind of the shape like a line below. Then you go up. And then this goes like a round dome, goes down again. So this is pretty much the shape, this the, the um, basic shape. Now if here, this one is, for example, a little bit uh, longer, higher, so uh, or taller, it always uh, confuse. You can also go make it a little bit longer if you feel like, or it just depends how you prefer, doesn't really matter. Then I will create the same here on this side. Here we'll switch it up. So instead of just being go up and then a curve, I will go um, and the curve earlier. I think I'm more nervous about drawing these outlines because I usually don't draw outlines. Um, but now that we paint something like a, um, something that is in a shape, I'm like, okay, I want to make this look good. <laughs> and if you feel like, okay, I, I don't want to paint ice creams, you can also use the same technique for, if you just draw circles or squares, anything works as well. Um, okay. Now we'll just quickly outline everything. Again, it's just an outline. It doesn't have to be any uh, perfect. Also, don't forget to leave out some space. I kind of forgot a little bit of space between those popsicles. So you can also paint the uh, stick. And then here one. And you can also use this technique and also this idea just to, for example, if you want to paint something um, and you don't have much time, or you just want to paint something before you paint something, like a bigger painting or something more concrete, or like, I don't know, something more um, com complicated or advanced or anything, um, you can use this as a warm up, or you can also use this to create a quick card or something like that, or bookmarks. This also uh, works great, just need to make it um, bigger. Like so. As you can see, I'm just painting these windows kind of. <clears throat> Some people say, just telling her to hurry up, which was sort of rude. Yeah, I mean, the videos that you will see on YouTube, that they, they are like maybe five minutes, but people actually sit there for maybe for multiple hours to paint something. So I, I guess it's it's kind of, um, some people are used to it and I, I get it, like sometimes you're already done or maybe you just want to move on and see how, how what to do if you don't paint, paint along. That's fine. And sometimes you just need to be more patient. Everything takes time and you can't expect everything just be ready in five minutes on, or um, to happen something very quickly. So here, I think that's fine so far. Um, I just keep them in one similar line like so. Now, if you, now here I'm using a pencil that is water soluble, but if you're using a pencil um, that is not, uh, or if, like, if you sketch it out and you don't want to see this, these outlines anymore, use a, a, an eraser and lightly erase anything that you don't want to see later. So for example, here I uh, had this line a little bit in the way and here also, and these outlines I want to remove. and. Also, if you draw an outline in general, you want to be very gentle to the paper. 
otherwise you will carve in or this also can be more difficult to erase things later. So like you with pencil, you can either damage the paper or it will be also harder to erase things later. Okay, just a little bit. It's, still want to see where to draw. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so are you guys following along? Are you painting the same? Are you painting something else? Totally fine if you paint something else. I think, um, like, I don't know if you watch news or talk to people who watch the news. Sometimes it feels like if you start talking to people about what's happening, it's kind of develops in all sorts of directions and I feel like I would rather want to focus on things that I can like do right now and relax me instead of getting even more worried about things. Outline done in time with you. Awesome. So even if you don't, are not done yet, it's totally fine. You can, the, the techniques are similar. And if, if you still want to like rewatch it, you can do this um, like on the replay, totally fine also. Um, Marco, it's fine doing it slow because it's live and we can follow you. Yeah, I feel like it's more fun if you watch and uh, you can actually sit down because sometimes sometimes people say my videos are too quick. Some people say I'm too slow, so you can't really please everyone. And sometimes I just need some time. And um, awesome. All right, so now I can start painting. Now for the paint uh, for the painting process, I wanted to show you a simple and different ways how how to create different effects. And one of the things I notice when beginners start with watercolors is that they completely forget the whole uh, magic of watercolors um, because the whole magic oh, that was glued on. Um, the whole magic of watercolors is that they are transparent and you can take out so much colors from one single pigment or six, like one pen, there's so much in it. So usually um, beginners start with a very, very saturated mixture of color and that's it. And then they struggle to add details later. So for this uh, first ice cream, I have this, for example, transition from a super saturated red to this very um, milky pas pastel red. So I'm gonna start and load up my brush with, this is a red, well, this is, the names are really weird here. So just pick any red you have. This is this is a warm red. This is a cool red in a comparison to both. Like it's in the context of those reds, this red is warmer than this one. It's probably, you can really see this on the camera, but it's the one is like more of a strawberry. The other one is more, um, Pinkish. Pinkish is more like magenta type of uh, red. So I'm gonna load up this warm red and just start outlining the top. And you can see it's very, very pigmented. And I create just like this beginning here, very pigmented and very saturated. And then I'm gonna just rinse off the brush. Like if you worry that like you waste paint, you can also just put some of this of this paint back into your pan or mixing palette, whatever you're using, and then just rinse it off. Then use uh, remove some of the water on the on the edge of the bottle jar, and then you can move this paint paint downwards with just clean water, and you can see that the colors get lighter and lighter. And we're gonna add more water here and uh, like sometimes you can see that some if you paint very loosely that um that you can see that some areas are like you have some holes some areas are a little bit darker and this is actually pretty cool when you when it comes to painting for example ice or um straw um, or like watermelons something like that because you don't want to have it super super even if you want to have this texture uneven texture, so that's totally fine. That's why I'm not using any fancy paper that like gives me all this 
um, even result. And this actually paper is actually not that bad. So I'm not, not bashing it or anything. I'm just saying um, for this exercise, it doesn't matter really what brand you're using, just wants to have some good paper that doesn't peel under your brush. That's everything that's, that's already enough. <clears throat> and as you can see, so if, for example, you feel like, okay, here there's a puddle of water or paint, just you can soak it up with your brush. And you can still add a little bit more, like, I, you know, like watercolors dry lighter when they're, well, they look lighter when they dry. So you want to kind of make sure you, when you start out, you make it slightly darker than they appear. So you still have the saturation. And then you can also dab some of this paint onto some other areas and just let it be like watercolors. They're always, sometimes you feel like you need to move the paint here and there and then do this and that. And you kind of want to control everything, but sometimes you just need to let go and let the paint melt and dry how it wants. Now this is a gla glaring here for my light because it's really dark today, so gloomy, and so it's kind of late here. So I need to use some light. So I hope you still see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so okay, so now we just um, I will just uh, keep it the way it is. Maybe I will soak up some of the areas here because it kind of looks too even. So I'm just add a little bit of um, remove some of the paint with my damp brush. So when the paint um, is still wet, you can clean your brush, remove excess water, and then just lift off some of the paint, and then you get some lighter areas here. And now for the ice effect, again, you want to clean your brush. So it's clean, pretty much clean, doesn't have to be super clean, but still clean. And then um, remove some of the moisture. And then you can lift the paint and create this ice effect like here you can see on this side by just lifting off the paint. Now here I'm following the curve and following the shape of this ice cream. Um, and I'm just pushing it down and just move my brush. And you can see there's still lots of lots of paint. This, this goes back to where I lift off the paint and that's fine. You can just go back with a clean brush again and soak up more and again you don't have to make it like super wide or anything you, you just want to have this light reflection and you don't want to go back with a, a wet brush otherwise you just push more paint uh, push more water into your painting you just want to um, use your brush like a sponge and just remove some of the paint like so and it's fine if it doesn't look even or anything if it dries uneven Totally fine. And then, like, there's always this um, hesitation or the temptation to move things more, add more things, and do this and that. And you, sometimes you just need to, okay, I just I need to move on and do something else. <clears throat> yeah, silver, black, velvet is this brush. Um, then I will just keep the way it is. Now, if, if you see that the pin goes back, you can still go back and put um, lift it off. Can you use my what? Okay. Why is this so glitchy here? I can't click anything. Mm. Oh, here. Kind of glitch. I don't know what's going on. Are you still guy? Are you still here? Um. Okay. Did I? I think I stopped him. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't see this. Um. <clears throat> yeah. If you see anyone spamming or anything, you can always um. You can always. I think you can um re report them and block them also. But I just did that. I'm sorry. Okay. Now the second one, now I said, said earlier, I won't mix any colors on my mixing palette. I will do this everything on the, on the paper. And this is a cool thing about watercolors. You can either mix colors on your mixing palette or on the paper. And I'm going to use 
we have just one color. Now I'm going to use a second color. I'll be using the same red and I will add the yellow. So then we can create an orange. And this is also a fun way to um, experiment with color mixture. For example, instead of painting galaxies or, or did, what do you do? We painted feathers um, a while ago. Instead of painting feathers, you can do something like this, for example. So I'm starting with a yellow. This is kind of warm yellow. It's called yellow medium. But it's kind of like cadmium yellow. Um, um, this is kind of like a lemon yellow. This is a warmer yellow. And I'm going to apply this again the same way. I'm just painting on dry. Paint on, like I, I've accidentally added some water here. But basically I'm doing the same with... Um, I apply wet paint on dry paper just to place the colors a little bit where I want and to keep them saturated. Like so, you can place also paint them on like on the bottom if you want. I just place them here. And then I'm gonna add, again, I clean the brush. I have my clean water also uh, to for clean water. And I have a clean water for clean water, that makes sense. And then I just load up the same red color here and place it below. Again, I just place it uh, following my outlines, but again, you don't have to exactly follow it to the extreme. You can still move around and decide where you want to maybe change the shape a little bit. And then I have this gap in between, and again, I will rinse off my brush and load it up with clean water and remove some of it on this edge so you don't just like put water on your paper and then just mix it a little bit like the red into the yellow slightly like so again you don't have to make it perfect you just want to see this transition and like like yellow a little bit of orange here's a little bit of white space from that I didn't cover a lot because this like the colors the watercolors is a transparent medium this is like the beauty of it someone was recently emailing me that um she uh, I think um she was worried that the colors were just so transparent as if it's a bad thing but actually you want it to be transparent that's the beauty of watercolors and so this is pretty much the same so like you you have this um, random blending from yellow to orange to a little bit of, there's a little bit of gap. Again, you don't have to make it super perfect. And if you feel like, okay, this area is a little bit too light, you can tap on some of the paint that you, like I have here, and just put them like on top here, just press it down. And if you have a very pigmented um, watercolors like I do here, and you just put it very loaded with a little bit of water, they will pretty much stay in place, you don't, they don't, won't spread. Or if you want, you can just blend it out a little bit if you want. So this is it. And then I will rinse off my brush again um, and remove some of the moisture here on my tissue paper just to control the amount of water I add. And maybe I will like add some random, lift off the paints at some random areas just to have some like randomness, like you, this is the whole goal of this exercise to mix colors and also just let go of this. I need to make everything perfect. And, um, everything needs to look super flat and everything. So this was um, the colors, the color names are all, all different depending on what watercolors you use. So um, this is a warm red, this is a cool red. So this is like uh, this is called red light. So this doesn't really tell you much, but this is kind of like a car, um, uh, like what is it? This is more like the cool red is kind of like Kinacrodon. And this is, um, which one is it like similar to um, like um, permanent red light if you use Van Gogh, something like that. All right. Now the next one, again, ah, I forgot to lift off some of the paint here just to add the ice effect. I mean, you don't have to, but I think it looks nice. Um, for example, just here a little bit, just a little bit, just to have some lighter areas 
like so. And again, the paint still moves. So if you feel like, oh, I did something wrong here, that's fine. It will eventually do its own thing. And that's the beauty of watercolors. All right. Um, now the next one, I'm using the next red. This is a pinkish red. And I will use the same pinkish red. Uh, I mean, the pinkish red with the same yellow. And just see what happens. And I feel like this is a great exercise for color mixing. I did something similar, but I painted, um, again, I, I accidentally added water, but it's fine. Um, I did something else that uh, I painted skies. It's also a great exercise for color mixing to really see how paint behaves and what color mixtures you get. So here, for example, I'm going to add this pinkish red. You can see how this is really looks pinkish. This looks like more like a tomato. This is like a, I don't know, like, mm, I don't, I don't, like there's no real magenta in real life, right? I don't, I haven't seen any. Like this uh, candy pink. <clears throat> this is Sonets, I can put it here so you can see. It's not sponsored, I'm just using it because people are asking, Sonet. And then I will, again, I have, um, the paint here on top just to outline it to place the colors and then I'm gonna rinse off my brush again rip up with clean water and use uh, again the same yellow this is a warm yellow it says yellow medium it's not a real proper name but it's kind of like it's like a cadmium yellow and I'm gonna add this here to the bottom and again, mix it together. And you can see this is like a more, uh, like a, um, also like a nice orange color. You can combine different yellows and different reds and you will get different oranges. And this is a cool thing to know. Like for example, if I always encourage people whenever they start with watercolors, just to get to know your watercolors, how they behave, what colors you can use um, and what colors you can mix together, what they will look like when you mix them together. You can use this by playing around with like different techniques or you can create color charts. It's also a helpful way, but I think color charts, is, mm, like you have, I don't know how often people actually use them. So yeah. And then we have this, again, a mixture between this pink, this kind of red, orange and yellow again. And, and here I will just remove a little bit here on the side again, just to add this icy effect. My ice creams are melting. <laughs> okay, so this is like this. And again, this will still move, so it will change. But this is pretty much um, how it looks for now. And the other details we will add later. So I add it here to the bottom. Now this, it gets actually pretty warm here. So the colors dry really fast. Now, if you paint wet and dry, it's usually like it tends to happen more often, just the paint dries more quicker. So that's why wet and wet is also a great technique to give you more time to blend things. <clears throat> so for example, for this uh, next ice cream, I'm gonna, add some water first. So I create a layer of water on this ice cream popsicle stick thing. I just put water uh, inside this outline. And you also want to make sure that you just don't have like pools of water here. Like you can see that there's like this water, this gloss is way too, too watery right now. If I would paint, if I add water um, paint on it, I will have way less control over where the paint goes. So you want to kind of wait a little bit and then, then you can decide, okay, what color do I add? Um, I think I will go for, I have this greenish yellow, greenish blue. Um, let's go with that, why not? Um, so here I will be using a blue that is, it's kind of like, it's called Azur Galubaya. It's like just blue, but it's kind of like a, a cerulean blue type of blue. 
Um, compared to here, this is like an ultramarine. So the other one is like a, this greenish cool blue. This is what I'm gonna use. And again, I will load up my brush with water, just remove some of it um, on, the, on the brush on this rim here on this edge and load up my brush with this blue. Blue. I always used to say blue, and everyone was like, it's not blue, it's blue. So I'm working on it. I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, I actually I was born in Russia. So my first language is Russian. So I'm just adding this color um, on top. And you can see that when you add water to the paper first, the colors blend out and they'll start start doing its magic themselves like they move around and create this nice soft edge and you can move them a little bit where you want just don't think too much like okay where exactly does she put her yellows and reds it doesn't it doesn't be it hasn't have to be super super precise like i do you don't you just want to see um how colors behave and how what you can create by mixing them on your paper and how water reacts to your paints and everything like this so now I have this bluish uh, transition here. Now I'm gonna use this green here. It's called the emerald green, but you can also just use any green you have. This is like a bluish green, but you can also use yellow to mix in like a cool, like a lemon yellow. I would use lemon yellow, but here I'm gonna use this green. And it doesn't matter, like you, if, if you can even just add brown and see what happens. This is the whole point of this exercise to, to just, see what you can make with all these colors. And sometimes you will be surprised what colors you can create. Like later, I, th I think I will be mixing green with purple and it looks also beautiful. Just adding to the bottom here. And just mix them together here on top. And just loosely like blend them on the paper, like maybe dab on it a little bit, like dab the paint on top. Maybe I'll add a little bit of blue to this green here, just a little bit, just to add some texture. But this paint just sits on, on me. I mix up my clean jar with the dirty one, but okay. <clears throat> and then I will just blend this a little bit in. And the cool thing about wet and wet is that you can also um, Add texture on your paper like that. Like for example, if you have like this layer of paint that is wet, you can add, as I did earlier, you can load up your brush with a blue or green in this case and just like dab it on and make it melt. Oh, oh no, I painted a little bit outside the line. It's okay. No one's panicking. I got this. I have everything kind of out of control. No, under control. Oh well. Things happen. I will maybe fix this later. You will see. Okay, so this is how it looks. Maybe add some little blue here and there just to have some more texture when it dries. Um, maybe this has some blueberries in the ice cream. I read everything, but I try to because sometimes I like I don't read exactly every single letter, a uh, single sentence because sometimes I tend to read everything and then. I sit on one little area of painting for three hours and I want to finish this painting not in five hours. So I just want you to follow along. This is more important. And then we can chat later. Hi, Zainup Alam. So the point of these live streams is that we get together and paint together and get creative because I got messages where people were saying they have a hard time they're like so stressed or anxious or just not feel creative. And that's why I want to help. Like, just let's do this together. If you have um, difficulties to just get creative just by yourself, let's do this together. Like I'm sitting actually here and paint with you. So you're not alone. So that's why I'm doing it. <clears throat> okay, so then I will also lift off some of the paint while well, the paint is still wet. Just a little bit, just add this icy look. Just don't forget to clean your brush from time to time just so you don't rub in the colors that you just lifted into your paper again. <clears throat> and then um, 
I can also let's let's see maybe I can also do this here a little bit darker. Also, cool thing with like this ice popsicle ice creams popsicle sticks. Um, like you don't have to worry about even even like even application of your washes and how paint like how even the colors look. You can literally just in this in the stage of drying add water. So you create these cauliflower effects. If you if you follow me along, yeah, I always talk about these, like where the where the water pushes away the paint, and then you get these like blotches. This is actually a cool thing for ice. I think if you just add water on top and let the water push the pigments, that's also a really nice effect. <clears throat> um, Cheryl says that's okay, Mika. I like watching, listening to you. you. Can focus on the painting. Awesome. Thank you for understanding. Um, all right, now the next one, uh, we can use, for example, I have green, here I add a little bit of purple, it's also a fun, fun exercise to just to see what you can create when you add purple with green. Um, so I have some other, ex uh, I don't remember, I think I had something, no, but here, okay, let's add um green and then purple and see so again i will add the water to the paper just to give me more time as you can see i i added water first and the paper buckles more than when i didn't do this so it depends on your watercolor paper also i think this um this paper is pretty smooth for being cold pressed um so it dries pretty quickly right now and but it's okay i just add this water and then i'm gonna add green a little bit that i have here like a little bit just dab it on you can see it moves around like so and you can create like you can even just let it dry like like this and see what happens i think this is really cool And then I'm gonna add, I don't know, maybe I can also add some, yeah, let's let's stick to the plan. I'll just add a little bit of purple here. Maybe just a little bit that's more visible, like in between those green lines. And you can see that if you mix green and purple, you get this really interesting grayish blue. And maybe this is something you might want to use in your paintings. And you wouldn't really know if you didn't like, because sometimes people buy like 50 colors and they start painting and then they're like, oh my God, why is everything muddy? I don't understand. It's because I feel like people, like I, I did this a step way. It took me ages until I actually took the time to take the time to get familiar with my colors. So actually take the time to see, okay, I have, why do I have two yellows here? Why do I have two reds? Like, isn't one enough? Some people get upset about this, but it's actually there's a reason behind. So depending on which color you mix together, you get different results. So this is um, important to know. I have a mixing color guide, and I think it's linked below this video live stream. You can check it out if you haven't already, or just visit my website, macochino.com. You find the guides, and you can learn about color mixing and stuff. Um, I will add a little bit of purple again here just to make this darker. But again, you can play around with, as I said earlier here, for example, I have this very light um, pale red. You don't have to make everything super dark. You can really play around with saturation, and make some areas darker than others, and just have fun. Maybe I also add a little bit of blue to the green. Why not? Um, like this one, this is this cool blue. This is this, um, Cerulean, cerulean blue type of blue. I just melt it into this green and it turns into this bluish greenish blue mixture. And you can see that, for example, you can you paint um, this popsicle, but pretty much you can use the same technique to paint a galaxy and or gemstones or anything else. That's why I think color mixing, it's so important to just to, to know what you can, what colors to place next to each other without having mud in the end. <clears throat> and maybe even I will lift some paint um, here again. 
just to have some lighter areas. And again, we'll move and change things, but I think um, just having a little bit of highlights here and there, it's a lot to the whole painting. Like, I feel like it looks very magical. Like it could be like a nebula, a galaxy, anything you want. <clears throat> um all right and then um we have this this i think this is one of my favorites it looks uh, i didn't really see on camera but there's like also purple inside and it just really gets lost on camera sadly um again i think i will mm, yeah i will apply a little bit of water again again make sure when you apply water you just some blindly add water and then you move on to adding paint on top you want to actually also pay attention to how much water you actually added to the paper. You don't want to have pools. Any, like I, ha I have a video about um, water control, like at the, like the basis. Um, I don't go into every little detail, but it gives you an overview of um, how you want, how much water you want on the paper in general. All right. Transparent ice cream with flower petals, please. Well, this is, you can pretty much do this as well. Like I give you the idea, you can even just add gouache on top and add stars here, whatever you want. <clears throat> um, okay, and then we'll add blue here. The same, this is this cool blue. You can see it moves nicely here. And the more pigment, like the more concentrated your colors are, the less they move often, like they just sit there because there's pretty much a lot of pigments here. It's actually what I want. But it's, again, don't think about too many things at once. Just focus on colors and applying them and moving them around. And I'm gonna add again this purple here again. See, this is the, the colors that I lifted off. They already um, got pushed back again. So I'm gonna lift off some of the paint again later once I'm done here. Now, so I feel like I haven't, li um, I didn't use the power of the watercolors, just having some lighter areas because I always focus on mixing and I forgot about um, the pale and light versions of those colors. Like in, like in watercolors, you always want to start with light colors. So just like I said earlier, some beginners start with very dark and then I try to add highlights on top, like lighter colors, but it doesn't work um, with transparent watercolors. Like you can't, for example, if you paint a tree and you start with a very dark green and you want to add highlights with a very light green and your watercolors are super transparent, you can't really do this. So. You want to start actually with the highlights and then you want to add the shadows later. So this is kind of like if you, for example, if you started out with um, acrylic or oil, you kind of have to think backwards. <clears throat> so, ah, okay, I, have, I need to lift off the paint before it dries. So here I'm gonna, like you don't even have to, you can still keep it the way it is if you don't like this effect or if you want to do something completely different. I'm just, I'm moving some, just very careful. You don't want to, for example, if you, if it already starts drying and you add water on top, you will create some uneven texture. Like he pushes away already the, the already dry paint, but actually it looks pretty cool. I think the more, like with watercolors, you actually want to develop this habit where you like, oh no, this, okay, this, behaves this way, how can I change it? How can I adjust it and adapt to it? Like you don't want to like have everything under control. You want to have this, develop this uh, mindset of, um, I will just fix along the way. I will adjust, I will um, blend or add, remove things along the way. It doesn't matter that, that doesn't mean just because watercolors run over or there's too much paint, it's that you totally bad at watercolor painting. It's just that um, this happens. Like, we can always lift off paint, add paint on top, remove mistakes, or like try again. It's the whole point. You don't have to like be perfect in everything you do. <clears throat> uh, 
All right. Um, then, okay. Uh, I think I like this the way it is. I won't remove, I will just, well, I like the lighter areas here already. I won't add these highlights. I think I like the way it is. Now, <clears throat> this one I don't pretty don't necessarily like because I just randomly did something here. What I would think we'll try out is I have this other combination that I tried out earlier. This is like a purple with pink. And here I think I added some raw sienna or it was um, uh, like yellow ochre or something like that just to have this creamy effect. I think this also looks really cool. I will add this instead. So I will um, add water on top again, just to have the outline to paint on later, like the outline for the water. And like, it's like, instead of you, uh, instead of adding paint, I will add water as the base. And then you, again, you want to make sure you don't have too much, remove some by soaking it up with a damp brush. And then I will add again this purple that I used earlier. Just add it here. Make it blend out. Maybe I will change the shape a little bit. I feel like I have the shape are pretty, because I've carried so much, the shapes are pretty much the same everywhere. Just add and make a little bit more square top. And then here again, a little bit of little square. Um, like that. And I will keep this area um, free of paint in the middle. And then I will add a little bit of this cool red that I used here, not the not the warm red, this tomato red. I will add um, this pinkish red. Now this is actually purple. It looks blue on camera. I don't know why, but it's actually purple. Um, and I will add it here on the bottom. And because it's so pigmented, it doesn't spread out much. But it's fine. I will just add it like so in the center. And then I will blend it up with clean water again. Rinse off your brush, clean your brush again, remove excess water. And then you can start blending it towards the center just to have this transition between saturated um, pink red and like this a very soft pink. And I will also move this here because I changed the shape a little bit. So I need to readjust a little. So, and here I added, um, this was yellow ochre, I think. Let's see if, if it was right. I will just add it a little bit here to the middle. I mean, this is a color that usually um, makes everything muddy. Not everything, um, some mixture. Sometimes you want to use this color. Uh, so I will just mix this in a little bit. I think I don't make this exactly the same, but I think it will still add something different because here we add pretty much used just two colors. Now we add a third color. And whenever you add a third color, it's very easy to um, mix muddy colors together. Like for example, um, orange, um, orange and blue, for example, if you mix them together, because in the orange there is yellow and red, and then you add blue, you have three primaries, and three primaries mixed together add, create a muddy color. So that's why you always want to make sure you don't add more than two colors together. And also <clears throat> just make sure what you place next to each other. Sometimes they run into each other and then create mud again. Now here I don't, um, I think I will add a little bit of pink. I'm sorry if, if I stop, um, talk too quickly again. I'm just trying to focus and explain at the same time and still a little nervous doing things on camera. I'm not, I'm usually film stuff and um, I have, whenever something doesn't work out, I can just try again and film again. But here you can actually see what I'm doing and I can just change to something else. I'm just you will actually see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, maybe I will. Also don't forget that colors dry lighter and they'll still move when they're wet. So don't feel like this pressure of, I need to 
make everything look perfect again. Um, purple here, purple. We'll just change this shape here a little bit. Like so. Um, mm -hmm. Ria, Shell, I forget to breathe very easily. I actually have this poster on my wall next in front of me saying, inhale, exhale, and I sometimes forget. This is so like it's so important. Like whenever you feel anxious, stressed, it's just because sometimes you just forget to breathe, and then I remind myself, <sighs> breathe. Here you can see how I moved this purple down, so I. But it's, it's fine, just make sure it's use clean brush to do this. Move a little bit here. And again, don't try to like force anything. Just don't forget that watercolors um, do their own thing also. You just need to let them do a thing, their thing. It's like I like to say, it's a collaboration between you and, and the watercolors. It's not like you forcing anything onto the Paint that like you say here, here I am. I apply the paint, okay, and you can do the rest watercolors. And this is how you actually, this is something you need to train yourself when you're just starting out. You're like, oh my God, everything moves. And now this just doesn't work. Oh my God, what's happening? It's actually chill. Like, like watercolors do know what they're doing. Mm. I need to change my, 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 because I have this blue light setting on my monitor. So I actually have this night light setting on my monitor that turns on at eight. So I, I can actually fall asleep. So it blocks the red, the, the blue light. Just need to turn it off quickly. All right, next. This was, I think I used just um, blue and yellow just to mix this green. Um, I think I will, I don't know, I think I will, move on i think i have i have red i have yellow orange green blue purple blue purple what else i i don't know i think i have every color possible right now i think i will um what else could we mix together green purple what what do you guys say what color should i mix together I hate, uh, Carolina says, I hate when I forget to let it dry and add like black and then it gets everywhere. Yeah, like um, sometimes even if you think something is dry, it's actually not. It's like almost, but it's still like if you add paint on top, it will just be a disaster kind of because like it will create these blotchy effects. Um, so you should actually like wait or use a hair dryer. At this point, like nothing will move. So you can just use a hair dryer. Pink and green. Pink and green. Like we have pink and green that comes here, maybe, but I will like something here in between. I kind of don't want to use green and blue again because we have this already. So maybe you have a good idea. Um, I'm turning 48. Happy birthday, Adrienne. Uh, um, orange, green, pastel, yellow, and purple, pastel, green, and pink. Pink and orange. What oh, pink we have here? Um, green and yellow. Yeah. Mm. Green and red. Yeah, we have green and red here. Um, chocolate ice cream. Is it like brown and pink? No, what's chocolate? It's just black. I don't know if it will fit into this color scheme. Like I want to try everything like super harmonious here. So I'm. I think I'm something with purple. Purple and, I don't know, purple pink. Yeah, we have this here. Uh, chocolate ice cream, brown and pink. Brown and pink, okay. I was, we'll see how this goes. Um, I think I will, I will use pink for like the main color, I think. And then I will add um, the brown on top. So I will add um, the water here first. And then I will add purple and yellow, purple and yellow, purple and red. So purple and yellow say a lot of people. Oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't have purple and yellow, you're right. Okay, let's do this. Purple, yellow. Okay, then we'll, let's start with um, yellow. Um, I will use this lemon yellow, we haven't used yellow, lemon yellow. 
Well, it says Hansa lemon. Ganza limonaya. But that's what to me, it's kind of like lemon yellow. And I'll add it here. Just a little random. We'll see. Thing is, well, it just needs to be careful. Like I said earlier, if you, if you uh, mix colors together that are on the opposite side of the color harm, uh, opposite side of the color wheel, you will create mud. So you want to be careful. Um, maybe you can also use, for example, we have yellow. Maybe we can add some pink here and then purple. What do you guys say? Maybe this will also work. Mm, like a little pink so it's kind of like I have some base here like a cotton candy effect and then I will add some purple like you said here the purple and cyan like cyan is like um I would say it's kind of like a a cerulean blue type of blue, I think. Something in the middle. Okay, let's add it here. So we have four colors now, just to make sure that they don't go, like you don't want to mix everything together, otherwise it will be just a mess. So you want to keep colors next to each other that are actually, like don't create the mud. Like here, for example, this is already dangerous. Like this, combination because as we have this red and blue it's kind of kind of can create a muddy result but let's just blend it out a little bit because this is pretty pigmented here nothing moves but look it kind of looks like clouds I accidentally created clouds I think but the, the cool thing about this is that you can actually like you, when you try this again, or if you want to paint this, but use something, not the ice cream, a popsicle sticks, but some like galaxy or something, take the time to explore what colors create what color when you mix them together, like what mixtures are happening. If you flip the blue and the red, then it will be the flag of the country I was born in. <laughs> yeah, it's actually interesting. Sometimes when I, whenever I want to check if something looks good or like if something needs to be like fixed or changed or adjusted or something like that, I like to either flip it like that, like here it doesn't really matter, but if it's like a paint, something more um, like a landscape painting or something, I don't know, something, um, I switch it around to see if there's something off or I'll take my painting and look through the mirror. So it's actually mirrored and then you can see that something, for example, is not parallel or something's crooked or this is too much or this is too little and you get a new perspective because if you look at one thing just like this, you don't see all the details. Like you only see one thing, like one perspective. So changing it up and even just taking a picture with your phone and looking through the phone can immediately give you more ideas and you can actually see what's maybe wrong or what you can change. So I do this all the time. Because sometimes you, you just can't see it if something is, like you, you know, like something is wrong like or something is off, but you don't know what. Just need to just take a picture and look at through your phone or as I said, like through a window, uh, through, window through a mirror. Um, I think I will change this cool yellow to this other red. I just put it on top because I feel like this is a little too neon. It's a little bit here. I think I spend way too much time on this ice cream popsicle part here. Oh well. All right, and then I will just remove some, just a little bit, just to have some highlight here. And again, we don't paint super, super three-dimensional and realistic, so don't worry about like making it 3D or something like that. <clears throat> All right, and then last one, I will do, I really like this uh, pinkish, um, I will, I think I will just paint wet on dry. I will use again, this pinkish red. Mm, I think I will also change the shape a little bit. Or not, I don't know. Like so. 
And then I will uh, clean the brush. Don't forget to clean the brush and then use the other clean water. Like you have the rinsing of brush water where it's dirty and then you have the clean uh, water where you use to load up your brush with clean water because you don't want to have this pink when you go to the green because otherwise you will already mute everything. You want to have this very vibrant color. It's like whenever, whenever you switch colors, you want to make sure that you don't have the residue of it in your brush. Because sometimes, for example, with yellow, it's super, super easy to lose this color. Change the shape a little bit. We'll just add it a little bit like, like a little like this. Um, how did you do the darker stripes in the second one from the third row? Yeah, I will show you exactly how to do this. It's just like this is the first layer, and then I will show you how to add sets. So this is um, it's just like the first layer. Like in watercolor, you want to work in layers because um, this is like the whole whole magic. Like there's some like I feel like um, there are so many people who are scared of watercolors or try watercolors but they're like mm, I don't know they're kind of like difficult I would rather paint some use something else but they miss out on so much magic and that's why I'm trying to do everything what I can to show people that it's actually doable like you it's not that difficult you just need to like if you think something's difficult then it will be difficult but you're like okay let's let's explore this let's let me see what I can do what I can learn what will happen and how I will adjust. I think that's more important than, okay, this is difficult. Like, this doesn't really help you, this thought. And for someone else, maybe a watercolor is, is light, yeah, light, it's easy. It's just like for you, maybe you feel this way, but watercolor is watercolor. It's, it's, it's not a certain way, it's just the way it is. And you decide how you feel and think about it. Um, Okay, I think this is like you can see like if you um, mix pink with green, you can also create a very nice purple. It's also beautiful. Like it's a muted version, like a Bordeaux kind of um, Bordeaux, um, or like a like it depends on the ratio. If you have lots of red or lots of green, you have different mixtures. I have this in the guide, I think, in the mixing guide, color mixing harmony guide. I'm not sure. I show you how you can transform these two colors into beautiful mixtures. Instead of using black, you can just use, for example, green or blue or red, depending on what you're painting. And here, I think this is because there was like in zero water. It's pretty streaky here, so I'm gonna rewet it here. And again, just play around with the paint, with the water. All right. Also, if you guys are play, painting these um, popsicles with me and um, or something else inspired by that or during this live stream, I would love to see what you create. You can, I actually open a, a new free Facebook group where you can share your art and exchange, um, like talk to other people and show your art, get feedback and see what others are doing. Because I feel like sometimes when you don't have friends uh, like nearby who do the same thing, or now you can really go to friends to paint, or you don't want to do this um, alone in general, you can have a group of people who do the same because not everyone likes painting and don't really understand what that is and why you would do this. It's not like for children or something. Um, so that's why it's a good. It's always good to have people who do the same thing that you do or like the same things that you do. Okay, I think I, I take too much time again. Um, all right, so here I'm gonna remove some here just on the top because here it's light enough. What is uh, Carolina, Carolina asked, what is your favorite thing to paint with watercolor? I think clouds, clouds and just color mixtures and different shapes. Like I've been with similar things, creating clouds and galaxies. Um, just something where I, sometimes it depends on what I'm feeling. Sometimes I want to paint loosely and don't focus on any shapes. I want to just mix colors. And then that's why I like painting skies. It's very therapeutic because 
I don't like some. Well, it depends. Sometimes I feel like painting something more detailed, um, but sometimes I don't. So depends on what I'm, what I feel like doing. Um, <clears throat> snail for mail. You are so sweet for doing this. It feels really good to paint along with someone. Yeah, I know. I feel like this is so much fun because if if I upload a video, you, it's it's not like everyone immediately goes and paint it. Um, so it always takes some time to get some feedback. Um, so if you paint along and you can actually paint something I show, or, or just in general, you paint along, it feels like we do this together and it's really fun. All right, so, so this is the base. Now we can move on to um, adding the these details here, like these shadows. And here, this is not that difficult that it made me look. Um, the more, just important thing that I, whenever I just, um, it's not like I paint popsicles, like popsicles all the time. For example, here I have this one version where, I mean, it doesn't look bad or anything, but I feel like when I painted it here, the, um, the, like the space between those lines is a little bit too little. Like you can see there's like, you can really stick, just, just like, just like a pause button or something like that. Um, so that's why I, when you do this, Make sure that you have some space in between, like here, for example, I have more space and I feel like it already looks better or here. Um, here again, I have too much, too little space. And um, and if you have too little space, I feel like it looks off. So that's why it's good to like plan and test out, and do sketches. So you actually see what works and what doesn't. Um, so <clears throat> the colors can run better with the wet and wet pens, yeah. So there's many methods how you can do this. So it's just like um, explore different ways and see what the differences is and what you like. Um, uh, that plan, man. Thanks, Mako. I have really enjoyed this exercise because I'm just beginning. I will use this again and again. Awesome. Well, we're not done yet. So we're we're still adding the details. Hang on there. We are almost done. But I will show you how to do these details here. Now for these shadows here. Like I said, watercolors um, is a transparent medium and you work in layers and it's transparent and it's the beauty of it. So again, here, for example, I will add another very light layer of the same color. So I won't use uh, pink and yellow. I will just use pink here where I, I don't know. Yeah, I think I will use pink, this pink color. And I will create a very, very light layer. So the colors below get darker. So you get a darker pink and here you will get an orange color. So it's also like, creates um, like a, like you can either mix colors on in your mixing palette, on your paper, uh, like moving them around or by layering them. So there are multiple ways. So that's why I'm showing you this. So now I have, I don't have a mixing palette right here, but I will just use a little bit here in the corner just to make sure I don't have too much color. You want to have just a little bit of water and, and just a little bit of paint. You want to have, like I will swatch it so you can see it. So it's very, um, light, so nothing's saturated or anything. And then I will just follow again the curve and the shape. First, like the first uh, on the left. Also be careful, you make sure that everything is super, super, it's completely dry. You don't want to, uh, like here, for example, it's dry, so I won't go here. This is pretty much dry, so I will add it here. So pay close attention. And I will add it here. Here. So I will start at the edge. So I will keep some space to the edge. And then I will just outline carefully. You, want, you don't want to scrub over the paper, just very light. So you have this, like, like a very light layer. And I will do the same here on this other side. And again, it doesn't doesn't have to be like super, super realistic or anything. I'll look a certain way, just have this first layer. And then, so again, here you follow the shape around on the top and the bottom. So on the top it's round, on the bottom it's flat. But again, you can also like, if you feel like you can also create other shapes, like it doesn't matter. And while this is still wet, you want to add a little bit more paint on top. So I'm picking up, more paint just with the tip, just to add some, just to get some pigments a little bit. And I'm gonna 
at this right at the edge where like here on the very edge of this a uh, strip or strap strip and then we'll just outline this here so i add wet paint into this wet um layer and you can see it creates like this shadow right because like if you imagine the light comes from well, like here like that or i don't know from like from this side you have this um this area doesn't get much light and you can only see this left side for example you can also change it they can also paint it on the right side but here to make this um the same i will add this line on to the left side so then you get this shape Johnny boy, hello, Miss Magatina. Are you going to share your popsicles? Um, I will share them on social media. But sadly, you can't eat them. They look delicious. I, I really like to eat this one. This looks really good. Um, and you just want to, like, you don't want to overdo it. Like, if you if you feel like, okay, this, that you don't see any any darkness on this side, just add just a little bit. You don't want to have much um, water on your brush. Otherwise, you just, um, spread the colors too much, just like here. And you have this little detail. <clears throat> I really like the mixed colors. Yeah, like I really like this exercise to just blend colors and see what they create. And it looks really like you can, like we didn't paint any like super, super realistic things. We just played with colors. And I think this is so therapeutic and fun. Um, next one is this blue one. So now this looks a little bit different to my, well, pretty, well, it's similar. Um, and I will do it here. So I will use blue here. You can also use green, whatever, it works the same. Um, just remember you want to add just a very thin layer. And okay, well, what, here, I think this was this color, yeah. So again, you want to make sure that it's very light. I'm not too light, so it actually you can actually see it. And then I will up the, do. Oh, careful! It's still drying here. I don't think I smudged already, but it's fine. Um, we'll just do the same here. I will outline the shape here. Careful! Like if you see, okay, I don't really see a difference. Just pick a little bit more paint. But not like here, for example, it's already too much. So remove some of the paint on your tissue paper and then just lightly add it here. You want to just make sure, like, that's why you want to paint first, paint lightly and then add the details. Otherwise, you can't really see them sometimes because you just paint it too dark. You want to have this um, uh, opportunity to build up your painting. So, and then again, you want to add these darker lines inside those round long shapes that you painted here. And here again. And you have some three dimensional ice cream. Hi Mika, how long are you doing this session for? I'm almost done. I'm just adding some of the shadows and I'm done. And then I will need to add the popsicle sticks. All right, so, and then I'm gonna add here one. Here, now here's a little bit tricky. I have so many colors. Mm, I will do, I don't know, which color should I use? I think I will just use, I mean, if you want to make it super, super, uh, uh, accurate, you can use multiple colors, but I think I'll just use yellow, this one. Now yellows are typically more um, more opaque, so you want to make sure that um, you adjust the intensity a little bit, so it's not too pigmented, but also not too light, so you can actually see something. Now you can see here, now I, I layer this, yellow on top of this blue you get this green i feel like also like this is super fascinating and I, I like layering colors because by layering colors you can also create a new color like i add this yellow to the blue and i create a green and i think it's really cool um now because um 
yeah, I think I should actually use blue here because you don't really see this. You can really add shadows with yellow, like more. The yellow is already like a super yellow, um, super light color. So I think I will just go back to purple or something like this, just a little bit, just to add. And again, like remove some excess paint, or otherwise you will have way too much. You don't want to spread it too, too much here and then also here just to add this shadow here and i will also blend it out a little bit like with a damp brush like that's why you have your tissue paper or paper towel to adjust the water on your brush so and you have something like this now this is a little bit tricky maybe i should have used yellow in this case because like you know yeah it's not really that realistic but i think it's also cool um here i don't know i will keep it this way and i mean you can also uh, continue this and add stars if you feel like okay i want to i want to make a um, galaxy ice popsicle ice cream or something like that you can totally do this mm, and then for this uh, for the popsicle stick i'm gonna use yellow ochre just a light value of that like a less saturated version just a little bit here and here, just like a baguette shape, kind of. If you've seen my other live stream where we painted, um, what was this? This galaxy popsicles, galaxy popsicle planets or something um you can also do this for that as well like this is a similar technique kind of but we created uh round shapes here we have more for more abstract square round shape now this is a little bit too saturated now if you want you can also add a more dimension and like any more details to the popsicle sticks if you want, I'm not sure. We'll see how how we feel about this in a second. So I feel like we need some music. It's so quiet when I'm. I feel like I'm talking to myself in my room, and and this is very. It feels a little awkward because there's like zero sound. Um, I think music would definitely help. Let's see here. Maybe I will add some, I don't know, burnt sienna, just a little bit. Just to have some darker, like some more texture, like it's not super flat, but it's not super, super necessary. Just depends on if you want to make this, it depends on the style, that pretty much. Here a little bit, just some dots here and there, maybe a little blending out here because it's dry here. A little bit here below the popsicle, like as if there's like shadow falling down. And that's pretty much it. So this these are the popsicle sticks. Now you can use those for like different techniques, uh, different, like you can paint squares, uh, galaxies. Uh, um, you can even, for example, here I use different shapes. Um, what else? I have different other versions where I tested out different mixtures. Like you don't even like, for example, here it's it's very very textured and not very even. That's the beauty of it. Like you can really play around with different things. Like here, it's like a more uh, a longer, taller shape. I don't know, um, or just one color like this pink. I like. Um, what else? Like here, yeah, I also like this one. It's like a more like a fruity berry kind of flavor, I guess. Um, right here, could, like you can also add some strawberries, like inside, like frozen strawberries. I think this will be cool. <clears throat> yeah, I really like the triangle as well. Like I was thinking maybe I should add this to the mix, but I want to keep it more like a little simple. Like here, for example. It could be like berries inside. Now, you, it's actually purple. I don't know why it looks blue on this camera. 
this is very sad because it's actually purple and glued mixed together. Uh, what's the name of the Facebook group? It's linked below the uh, live stream like this. And then literally in the, fir very, in the first sentence, um, this, there's this link where you can share your art. And so everyone can see, because if you DM me the paintings or if you just um, upload it, uh, it's hard to like show it to people and discuss it. Uh, do you have guys any questions? If there was anything not clear or um, do you want me to cover something in a later stream or in a video or something like that? Also, I have all sorts of, um, guides don't forget in the description box and also in um, on my website just go to makochino.com and you can find more guides that I might not have linked below this video um, I don't know if Chloe says I don't know if other people have these but there are popsicles in the shape of rockets they would be so cool and waterfall yeah totally you can totally do this um, you can totally um, I, they're probably like there's also like ice cream, I think, as in a cactus and a finger and just like a swirl, like a marshmallow and stuff like that. You can totally do this as well. Mm. Lady asks, What do you do if you can't afford watercolor paper? That's a tough one. Like, I usually save up whenever I want something or like I really need. I don't want I save up for that because I mean you can use other paper like like not like you can but it's not the same like you will like if you invest in good um or you have watercolors you can still play around with other people like drawing paper but I don't it's like mm, won't work that great I, I never like encourage to use it because you will never like speak you feel like oh my god this is watercolors are not for me because it doesn't work it's just actually your paper so I don't want you to feel discouraged. But if you just have fun, you want to just uh, mix colors and just see what you can do and you're fine with it, then it's totally fine. You can do whatever works for you. <clears throat> Could you do more videos um, on shading? Really struggling with that. Yeah, totally. New Light, this was great fun. I'd, I'd needed a reason and inspiration to paint again. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, like sometimes people think, no, it's not a good time to paint. I am stressed. But actually, like painting is where you sit and relax, it's like meditation, like where you focus on colors and mixing and you you feel like, oh, my God, what else can I paint? And then you completely like no, don't realize that the whole day is gone. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> Humaira asks, are you watercolors better than pants or vice versa? What would be better? They're both great. Depends on like what you prefer pants are more convenient the tubes you can mix more colors at once depends they both like it's not it's like not it's not that one is better than the other it's like they have their own place in the whole watercolor uh world um you can put some music if you want next time perhaps it'll help you to be more like yeah shall i thank you for calming me down the whole stream i can sometimes forget to breathe yeah uh, what is your favorite color? It's uh, changes. So I like yellow right now. But yeah, I think it's almost, oh yeah, it's one and a half hours. I hope you uh, enjoy the stream. I um, can't wait to see what you create. Let me show you all these little, like if you need some inspiration or anything, like for more questions, um, here are all sorts of experimentation. Ah, I think I have also some, was it here? No, I don't know where it is. I also had one, um, no, it's not here, I don't know. But there are different shapes, like I can wait to see what you create. Um, uh, I find color mixing difficult. Yeah, that's why, that's why I always encourage, just keep it simple, start with simple shapes and enjoy the process, like see what, because sometimes when you haven't painted in a while or haven't painted at all, you don't really know how to use your color sometimes your colors are too pale. Sometimes they are too pigmented. So you need to really get familiar with your supplies. So this, I think this is a great exercise. Bun Bun, also someone asked, I want to watercolor. I know something, but it's not like really watercolor. It's Gansai. There is a Gansai kit. Have... Yeah, I think Gansai is like a different type of, um, like this, um, 
I forget the name, like um, with this big, uh, with the big pants. I don't forget the name. Um, but they're like more opaque watercolors. I want to make my own watercolors. I need to find a good place to get good pigments. Yeah, it's a lot of work, I think. I've seen other people do that. Um, so if you're subscribed to my um, newsletter, um, I sent out a I, an email where I showed you all the times. Like we have one next week and the next the week after that, different time zones. So if you're from New Zealand or from India, or it's, like you said, it's super late, you, this will be super early for you then. So I will change up different time zones. I hope you will join me. Um, yeah, Ganza is like, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like Ganza is like Kuritaki Watergas. Yeah, exactly. All right. So if you guys have any questions, you can join the Facebook group and comment below this video later and reach out to me uh, on social media. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. I don't want you, like, I want you to go and practice more, paint this, and maybe create more cards, maybe paintings, share, me, share all sorts of things that you create with those um, techniques that I showed you. And most importantly, have fun, relax, and uh, have fun. Uh, Cheryl, thank you, Miko, but don't forget to rest too for you. Yeah, definitely. I've been working all week. I'm actually working on my book. So that's why um, there's like little time to really uh, focus on anything else. So I think live streams are a great way to really communicate with you and paint together. And I think this is um, a lot of people like those. And I really appreciate that you join. Um, um, Mako, thank you for su suggesting people save up for something they want. Seems like people have forgotten this concept. They want things now or else they are unattainable for some reason. Yeah, like I think this is like with with social media, especially like everyone wants everything now and immediately. Um, but yeah, you need sometimes you need to work hard and wait and save up and be patient sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's like the whole like, this is the way of life. Um, Lisa th says, this was so great. As usual, I always look forward to your videos. Have a great day, Mako. Thank you for joining, Lisa. Um, yeah, we will see each other next week at 10 a.m. Central Eastern time. Um, I don't remember which one is uh, in which time, but um, you will see the notification, I think, hopefully, on my channel later. So have a good good evening, morning, whatever time it is. Thank you for joining again. Have a wonderful um, time. Stay safe, stay sane, especially stay, stay sane. Um, and yeah, I will see you in my next stream on everywhere else. Thank you guys again for joining. See you.